Live from New York. Good to have you in on a Friday. My name is Nathan Harvey. This is the Harvey Hour. As always, I'm joined alongside my dad, Stephen Harvey. How are you doing on this Friday? Very happy. It's Friday. Yeah. It's been a long week. Hey, well, now we get to chill. We get to discuss some topics. Unfortunately, two out of the three of our, I guess you would call it normal topics, are our news topics before we jump into our normal Friday picks. Uh, two out of the three of them have to do with with blowing injuries to two teams. Uh, maybe even three teams, actually, because the first one, we are talking about last night's game. Last night's game was rough for many, many parties, but especially for the Cincinnati Bengals because about, I would say, three hours before the show started, there was some breaking news. Joe Burrow uh, suffered a torn ligament in his hand, and this was Z- head coach Zach Taylor today announcing Joe Burrow's injury. Uh, the biggest news will be w- with Joe Burrow. You know, he had an acute injury yesterday, um, likely on the play before before his last one, where he tore a ligament in his wrist that will likely require surgery and require him to be out for the rest of the season. You know, just talking to guys on the team, uh, excited to rally around Jake, and we got a lot of great players on this team, and so. Um, excited to see this team really band together for these last seven weeks and, and find a way, you know. And so uh, we're excited for that opportunity, but obviously disappointed for Joe. Not only was Joe Burrow hurt, T. Higgins was already out. He was already, he's already been dealing with an injury. We, we, uh, the Ravens lost Mark Andrews in this game. He's out for probably, I, I, don't, I don't know if they officially called it he's out for the year, but it's looking like he's more than likely out for the season. OBJ was banged up in this game. Lamar Jackson was banged up in this game. Uh, Britt, the defensive, uh, the defensive back for the Bengals, he was banged up for this game as well. There was a lot of injuries on this Thursday night game, and we were expecting this shootout between Lamar Jackson and Joe Burrow, and we didn't get that. Now Jake Browning will take over at quarterback for the Cincinnati Bengals. It seems like uh, Zach Taylor's ready for him to be the quarterback. They haven't shopped around, looked uh, for free agent quarterbacks. There isn't much out there. Uh, correct, there isn't much out there. I mean, Joe Flacco's getting calls, but I want to know, do the Bengals have any shot, 0-100% to 100% shot, at making the playoffs with Jake Browning or, or maybe even a free agent quarterback as their starting quarterback? Well, they have a lot of pieces. I mean, they have uh, really good wide receivers. right? They have a very good defense. They have decent running backs. Uh, Joe Mixon, very good running back. So they have a lot of tools. But looking at Browning in that game, he came in last night, man. He, didn't do, he couldn't do anything. He couldn't move the ball. They only got, what, one touchdown, and it was – after it was over, basically. So I think it's very questionable whether the Bengals can uh, can uh, get into the playoffs now. I, I think if they had won more games earlier in the season, then maybe. But their record is 5-6 and six now, isn't it? 5-5. Five and five. By 5-5. Five and five. And they're last place in their division. They get a lot of competition in the division. They still got some division games to play. Um, I, I don't – I think it's – Probably not likely that they make the playoffs now. That would be Do my you view. Think it, a new quarterback could change that. The, that around? I don't know who is it going to be. There, there isn't much. There isn't anybody out there, right? Who are they going to get? You try to uh, steal uh, Joe Flacco away from the Browns. You got Matt Ryan. You got Matt Ryan. His arm is shot. You got Nick Foles out there. Nick Foles. Uh, I don't know. Maybe he's probably better than Browning. I mean, I never heard of Browning. Where's he from? Does he have any experience in the NFL? I don't think so. No. He looked a little nervous out there, for sure. He, he looked like a deer in the headlights when he was playing, and uh, he wasn't able to do much of anything. So I'm surprised the Bengals, with the team they have, wouldn't have had a better backup quarterback than uh, him. You know? I mean, if you have Joe Burrow, you don't expect to have yeah, to, to ever he, bring him out look there. Look at the way players are getting hurt these days. We've got... Uh, Aaron Rodgers out for the, with his Achilles he, uh, uh, injury. You got Deshaun Watson's gone now for the year. We're going to talk about that. Lamar got banged up last night. Uh, not so bad that he couldn't stop, uh, couldn't play. But uh, you know, and now Joe Burrow down for out for the season. So uh, you got injuries are part of the NFL, right? D- Daniel Jones is out, right? You've got it listed here. Kirk yeah. Cousins is gone for the year. Anthony Richardson gone for the year. Six quarterbacks. Yeah. Yeah. Gone. 
And then some of these quarterbacks are having some of their best seasons. I mean, Anthony Richardson looked like a promising, uh, budding star in the NFL. Deshaun Watson, think about it. Uh, we're going to talk about it in a, in a couple minutes, but he he went 14 of 14 with his shoulder basically almost ripped from the bone there. Uh, it's 20% of the league's quarterbacks out for the season. <laughs> Kirk Cousins is having yeah. a career. He was having a phenomenal year. They couldn't get These the These guys wins, are starters. He was playing phenomenally. Yeah, gone. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think. you got to have a decent backup quarterback. I think it's important these days. I mean, if you have a franchise guy, you don't expect. You, you, I mean, yeah, you don't expect them to get hurt, so you're not going to pay four million, dot five million, or six million, however much, for a backup quarterback. It's just wasted cap space at that point. No, you think the? How do you think the Bengals are feeling about well, that today? Well, that, huh? that 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 that. Or how about the Browns? That, right, we'll talk about that in a minute. But, yeah, uh, yeah, I think that. Um, I think it's very hard for the Bengals now. I, I I think it'll be very hard for them to 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 make the playoffs. Uh, I don't think they uh, personally. I don't think they're going to make it. I think that they uh, they won't get there. I mean, they don't have an easy schedule the rest of the way, right? No, they, it's going to be uh, tough for them. They're going up even the, the uh, division is very good. Their correct. division, all the teams could make the playoffs. Right now, three out of the four of them are three, in the playoffs. Three, the, three out of I four. I think what, two games ago, all four of them were in the playoffs. So that's yeah. That's something. Uh, so far, the Bengals' upcoming schedule is the Steelers, Jaguars, Colts, Vikings, Steelers again, then Chiefs and Browns. There's one maybe win there if you had Joe Burrow. One definite win if you had Joe Burrow, and that'd be against the Colts. The Steelers have a great defense. Jacksonville is Trevor Lawrence, and they just got embarrassed uh, by the 49ers. They should have a bounce back game. Steelers defense. Steelers defense again. The Vikings, Josh Dobbs, the Pastronaut is having a phenomenal season so Pastronaut. far. Yeah, and then you got the Chiefs where not enough said, and then the Browns, great defense. So... Yeah, and besides Joe Burrow, anyway, he does poor, very, very poorly against the Browns. So that may not even have been a win if you even had Joe Burrow. So regardless of who's out there, uh, but I do want to, I want to show the injury now. This was Joe Burrow's injury. So he throws a pass. I think that's Jadavian Clowney. Uh, he tackles him, and that right hand falls on Joe Burrow's throwing hand. And then, actually, on the very next play, he throws a touchdown to Joe Mixon. And then right after that, right after the throw, you could see him wincing in pain, grabbing that hand. Uh, and then he walks off, and he, and 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 he's he's flexing it to to see you know what the problem is. But he said he felt it pop. Yeah. So that that was the injury. It, it didn't seem pretty bad. You you if you're able to read lips, he was talking to I think Patrick Queen, and he he thought he was all right. Then you get the uh, the scan in, you 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 diagnose it, and it's a torn ligament, which requires season ending surgery, which is quite unfortunate. Uh, but I mean, you say Jake Browning didn't move the ball. He went 8 of 14 for 68 yards and a touchdown. That ain't that bad. He had a 93 pass rating. He didn't really put the ball in harm's way. They, they could actually run the ball pretty effectively. 5.9 yards a carry, which actually uh, is very, very good for them because their average this season is 3.9. So they're able to run the ball against a, a, okay, a, 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 those, a great defense. Those stats are okay. How come they lost 34 to 20? Because when you lose your star quarterback, who is, I believe, the second or he's making the second most money per year right now. Think about it. Deshaun Watson and Joe Burrow. They are making some of the most money in the NFL. But when it comes to Joe Burrow, when you have a superstar quarterback who right now is leading your team uh, from a very, very poor first three or four games, you go up against the 49ers and you smoke them. You have an unfortunate loss uh, against the Texans where Tyler Boyd has a drop pass, and you lose your quarterback in this game to a, a, a weird injury like that. It's soul crushing. You can look at that defense. That defense looked lost after that point. And by the way, as soon as Joe Burrow threw that ball, they were up. They were beating the 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 Ravens before Joe Burrow got hurt. And even after that, even after Joe Burrow got hurt, that throw put them up, I believe, ten to seven. So when you look at it, the Bengals were actually in a position to win the game, or at least they were leading at that point. Joe Burrow could have won this game. I got nervous uh, when they threw that touchdown pass because we both picked the Ravens to win. So I was a little bit worried that, oh my God, is Joe Burrow back after that horrible, uh, unfortunate, I won't say horrible, but unfortunate loss against the Texans. And lo and behold, he gets hurt. Uh, Jake Browning will probably be the quarterback moving forward. Uh, but I'll also say this. I, I, I want to put some context around it. The Bengals this year have been horrible. Uh, they have the 30th ranked defense, the 24th uh, ranked total offense. They had the 31st rushing game in the NFL. So even if Joe Burrow was still healthy, but you're going up against a schedule like that, I'm not even sure, regardless of the quarterback, if they would make it. They had a a very very bad loss against the, the the Texans. You you beat the Bills, I would say, pretty handily. You beat the 49ers, but this team isn't exactly built to go that far. You have no running game. Your offensive line is still questionable, and your defense, like I just said, is ranked 30th in the league. And not only that, not only that, 
in order to gain in your division, you would need some sort of division win. They're 0-3 in their own division. Look at this. The Panthers are even better in their own division. They are 1-3, and, and they have one win on the season. So I don't know. I really don't know if regardless if Joe Burrow was out there that it would really matter if the Bengals make the playoffs or not. Now this sort of solidifies, yeah, they probably won't because Jake Browning is your starting No, they still have three games in their division to play against teams that will probably all be in the playoffs. Right. Yeah. So they're probably going to lose those games now. I mean, think. think about it. the Colts are even in playoff contention right now. They're five and five as well, but they have a better shot with Gardner Minshew at quarterback than you probably do with Jake Browning. Yeah. So it's going to be very, very difficult. Now, I want to talk about the Ravens now because they probably did lose Mark Andrews, and they also Lamar. You know, he was limping after several runs in this. He game. said he's okay though. And then OBJ got banged up in this game, but he should be fine moving forward. I'll say this right now, Mark Andrews. If you look at the numbers. If Lamar was throwing to Mark Andrews and, and Mahomes was throwing to Kelsey, Andrews had better production than Travis Kelsey has so far this season. So to lose a piece like that at this point in the season when you're making your run for a potential Super Bowl, that is soul-crushing. But I will say this, there is a there is a silver lining here. Actually, I should say golden lining. This is this is this was Odell Beckham's best game since the Super Bowl, or since that late Rams run that he had in that Super Bowl run. OBJ looked phenomenal. He had over 100 yards receiving. Uh, he looked phenomenal. And Zay Flowers, he connected on a couple shots. He should have had a touchdown. There was a weird, I think it was pass interference, or or maybe, I, I, I think it was pass interference or a defensive hold or something like that, uh, that brought that penalty, or that brought that touchdown back. So he probably should have had a touchdown. Uh, but as the Ravens generally do, they, they ran the ball very, very well. 31 carries for 157 yards and two touchdowns. So I want to know. Do you think that this injury to, to Mark Andrews, do you think it uh, negatively affects the Ravens? Do you still think they could be just as dominant without Mark Andrews? I don't think they'll be as dominant without him. He's an all-pro tight end. He's been the go-to guy for, uh, for Lamar Jackson uh, for a lot of his career. The only thing I would say, uh, without him, they do have a, a very nice receiver core. They have uh, OBJ. They got Trey Flowers. Zay they have Flowers. even have Nelson Aguilar. Even had a good game last night, huh? You see that touchdown he caught? I mean, yeah. the, the pass he caught it was tipped, and he got, he managed to corral it and ran in and did a somersault when he went into the end zone. Did you see that? That was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Former Patriot. Yeah, former Patriot who played crap when he was with the Kid ah, Patriots. I don't know about that. He did not play well when he was with the Patriots. He made a lot of mistakes. I I, 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 like, I could uh, argue differently, but yeah. that, that, that's yeah. anyway, for another time. So, you know, they can compensate by throwing to the wide receivers, I think. And and that that was the big thing going into the season was the fact that now Lamar has his weapons. Lamar has his weapons now. And showing that he can be a great passer too, right? I, I, Look at his, I, his I, throws. I, he throws darts. I think his arm is his throwing motion is kind of weird. It's not like he really winds up and throws it. He kind of it's like a zips dart. It, he, yeah. he zips it like a throwing a dart, and he can really get. He's got a strong arm. I I think he's. I always thought he was a good pass, so they you just didn't? never used him that way, right? I said yeah. this, and now they've sent the offense around where he's throwing the ball more. He's doing great. He is. He's really doing well. Is he? He must be ranked right up there as one of the top. Uh, quarterbacks in passing uh not numbers wise but but people have him as just a general quarterback they have him within the top three so far this season a lot well, of people top have three him is pretty good in the nfl I, absolutely 100 percent. and i think where'd right you rank now, him uh i don't have my number in front of me i think i put him two i two? think i think i yeah. i may have had joe uh not joe burrow i think i had two is still at number one yeah uh now obviously, i gotta say that lamar is ahead of him now i i would i would demote Tua at least I don't know if I would put him number one in the league. I mean, he league. had 200, 264 yards passing and 54 yards running last night. Yeah. no, uh, That's it, 300 yards of, of offense. I mean, so far him. this season, Lamar has been I, – I, I would say Lamar has been great, if not phenomenal. Could be the MVP. I, I definitely think he's in that conversation. He's definitely up there for MVP votes 100%. He had two touchdowns on this game, uh, throwing the ball. He had a 70.5 QBR, 121 passer rating. So far this season, he's been great. He's been uh, ranked, I think, as the number two or three grade of passer going to pro football focus. I mean, and, and and I talked about this when I made my top 10 list. I said, if you take a look at his years as a passer from his rookie year when he only played five games, or even if you want to include his unanimous MVP year, his first year starting, um, 
His, his numbers, his passing grade, has increased every single year so far, and it's exploded this season where he's like a top five, top three passer in the league. The numbers do not say that, that he's right up there. But if you talk about efficiency-wise and, and effectiveness throwing the ball, yeah, Lamar has done that. And then you add on top of the fact that he's the best running quarterback in the league. He's the most mobile quarterback in the NFL probably since Michael Vick. So when you add that on top of it, yeah, Lamar is a phenomenal quarterback in the league. And really, it's interesting just how teams will have to play him. I still don't know if I trust him late in games because the Ravens, I think for, since... Uh, two or three years ago, they lead the league in double-digit fourth quarter blown uh, <laughs> blown wins. So I don't know if I trust them. Well, in, he's doing in the better. He's been doing but, better in the red zone this year than he did in Pat last year. Right? He had turnovers. Yeah, he had a lot of uh, red zone unforced errors, and yeah. red zone interceptions and stuff. He's doing much better this year with that. One hundred percent. Last season they were thirtieth in the red zone. They're fourth this season. Yeah. So they they have done very very well in the red zone. And that could be the addition of weapons, mm -hmm. having OBJ or having Zay Flowers, uh, Mark Andrews once again. Well, Mark the defense. Andrews the is defense a top three. is very good. Oh, you know th this defense. And I talked about it's a about complete four. team. I think it's a complete it team, is. right? It is. They're they're the best running team in the NFL. The passing numbers again aren't there. They're nineteenth, but it's just about being effective with the ball. Uh, they're, they <laughs> Lamar's being very very safe. This team is third in or Lamar's third in interception or third fewest in interception. Interceptions, so he's doing great. Uh, the defense is second overall. Like like I mentioned before, this this is you could see little inklings and little things about the 2000s Ravens defense. They are forcing a lot of turnovers. I mean, this game unfortunately ended uh, a seven game streak of forcing one or more turnovers. So this defense has been absolutely on a tear seven of the last eight games. So the Ravens, I still think, yeah, while well, you lost Mark Andrews and that's unfortunate, uh, I think they're gonna go. Because Greg Roman was was playing to Lamar's strength of him being you know mobile and agile. Now you have Todd Munkin who's who's developed Lamar's passing game even more. I think you may now see them resort back to that more a little bit more run heavy because you don't have Lamar's security blanket Mark Andrews out there because he's lost for the year. I still think the passing game is going to be good. I just think maybe let's say they run it. I don't, I don't know the exact number. Let's say they run it forty five percent of the time. They're now probably going to run it close, much closer to fifty. You're probably going to see forty-eight percent running the ball. But I, I bet there will be the running backs doing it, not Lamar. I don't think they want him hurt in December this year. Yeah. Right. No. Yeah. In fact, he's he's, he's taking he's taking yeah. uh he's doing the slide here a little bit more to avoid getting hurt. And that's a smart move on his part. He wants to be around to be get into the playoffs to be able to play in the playoffs this year. Right. Last two years he's missed them. Yeah, I think he's played one out of twelve potential games in December yeah, and January. Yeah, and, so. and and when you do that, you know, when when you're missing that that amount of games, and last season they were doing pretty well, and then you go and then you have to start Anthony Brown and 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 Snoop Huntley out there to play in a playoff game. You, you you can't have that. You can't have that. So, I think Lamar's playing it safe now, and because of the passing game, he doesn't need to run anymore. That's he's a still smart can. move to have him pass it more. He still can, more. but yeah, no. Uh, I think so, he's a good passer. I, I, I have debated that he's not a great passer, and, and I was kind of validated by um, s some numbers out there, at least last year. The numbers said that he wasn't uh, as an accurate passer as people were saying, but this season I could definitely say he's developed his passing game a tremendous amount, and I'm, I'm excited to see just how far Lamar can get. So, uh, yeah, Ravens, let's see. They, they, they're on like a, you call this a mini, uh, a mini bye week. They're at Chargers next week. I'm probably going to pick them regardless because the Chargers still have no defense. They just gave up 41 points to the Lions. So, I don't know. We'll, we'll have to wait and see, uh, you know, what happens. But, yeah, the Bengals, Jake Browning at quarterback. I think, I think sadly, I had Joe Burrow as the MVP of the league this season. Uh, after that poor start and now he's hurt, I can safely say he's not going to be the MVP of the league. So, unfortunately, you have to get the Bengals have Jake Browning as their quarterback. And I think, I think we can both agree it's safe to say they probably won't make it to the playoffs. Uh, I think that door is officially yeah. shut. Uh, so let's get into our next topic here, and we're sticking with the the injury thing, sadly, because Deshaun Watson, uh, it was announced by the Browns' social media, I guess the Browns' official statement, uh, that, quote, Deshaun Watson underwent uh, an MRI Monday on two injuries sustained on different plays in the first half of Sunday's 33-31 win over the Baltimore Ravens. Imaging on his left ankle revealed a high ankle sprain. In addition, post-game, Deshaun notified our medical staff of a new discomfort in his right shoulder that he felt after a hit in the first half. An MRI of his right shoulder revealed a displaced fracture to the glenoid. I'm not sure... Uh, I'm not sure what a glenoid, I don't know what a glenoid, is, glenoid is, but apparently it, he's it, probably the only one that's got only person who's got one. Uh, I've, I've, never, I've never heard of this. Uh, never myself, heard of that. Before. But uh, 
you know, it, it could have been very, very bad because it, if he continue, he tried to, he said, just shoot me up and I'll continue to play on it. And by the way, he did play. He played about two and a half quarters with that fracture uh, to the glenoid. And he went 14 of 14 and led and led an insane comeback against the Ravens. Then last why week. aren't they letting him shoot it up? And uh, because uh, I, I, I think supposedly if you take another hit like that, it could be it could be like detached from the bone. You'll ruin your, your sh- shoulder essentially crumble. So you don't want that. But he's expected to make a full recovery in time for the 2024 season. So that is good. It's not a se- it's not a career ending injury. Uh, but yeah, Deshaun Watson is out for the year. And what's shocking is that the Browns announced that uh, DTR Dorian Thompson Robinson will be the starting quarterback. Against Against the Steelers this week over PJ Walker, which I found very, very fascinating. Me too. But uh, I want to know they're, you're going into a game against a division rival. By the way, at, at the AFC North, every single AFC North team was playing against another AFC North team, which I found very, very interesting. Uh, but regardless of the fact, you're going to a game against the Steelers who have a great defense. Your offensive line is pretty good. You have an opportunity to keep that playoff status and not slip down into maybe in the hunt section instead of being solidified as a six or a seven seed. You decide to start DTR. So I'm going to ask you, can the Browns maintain their playoff status with Watson out for the season and apparently moving forward with DTR as their starting well, quarterback? Well, I guess they're probably uh, regretting that they let uh, Joshua Dobbs go for a bag of footballs. I mean, yeah. he, they let him, they let him go to Arizona for nothing. Yeah, They got hardly anything for him. And look at how what he's doing now with Minnesota. I mean, he could have stepped right in there and played – Close to uh, Watson's uh, status, the way he's playing right now, right? And he's yeah. he's at least as mobile, maybe even more mobile than Deshaun Watson. He's played great. So I'm sure they're regretting that, right? I would say yeah, so, yeah. yeah. I'm not sure why aren't they playing P.J. Walker. I don't understand that. He didn't do so bad when he was in there. He has much more experience. This uh, rookie guy, uh, he going up against the Steelers in his first start, I think that uh, – I don't understand the thinking there. I would have thought that they would stuck with the uh, PJ Walker. I'll say this: I, I find it very, very, you know, unfortunate for DTR's case how he, his first two starts, or yeah, his first two starts are going to be against two great defenses. The first time he played was against the Ravens. He didn't score an offensive touchdown. He threw fifty-four percent, one hundred and thirty yards, no touchdowns, three picks. Now you're going up against a Steelers defense with T.J. Watt running at you every single time. So it's going to be very, very difficult to see uh, DTR get any sort of production. However, I will say this. The the, the Browns do have a little bit of, uh, of, of a fortunate side to this because they are the second best running team in the NFL. You can hand it off to Jerome Ford or you could uh, hand it off uh, to Kareem Hunt and let them produce. And DTR, fifth round pick, he's very, very mobile. So you have that part to him, try to minimize, uh, minimize his mistakes, at least throwing the football. But I kind of agree with you. P.J. Walker, I mean, you, you put him out there. Yes, he does have one touchdown to five picks, under 50% completion percentage. But you know what? The numbers, I would say, the numbers lie a little bit because P.J. Walker is 1-1, one and, one, and we remember the the great, I think it was a come-from-behind victory against the Colts, I believe was his, or, uh, uh, was it close to that? I don't know. He didn't get credit for that win, but he, he ended that game, and, and he won that game for the Browns. He's 1-1. and one. His only, I guess, starting win was against the 49ers. He did okay against the, uh, when he was with the Panthers. Right, right. No, he, he, wasn't so he had bad. some moments. He had yeah. some moments, but he did get replaced yeah. by Sam Darnold. So maybe they that. think this guy could be a uh, future star, Dorian Thompson Robinson. He played well in the preseason, but he was playing against second, and third string. It was the Hall of Fame uh, game, yeah. Yeah, defenses. So uh, you know, when he's in there, as you say, in his st- in his one start there against the Ravens, three interceptions. So the Steelers' defense is right up there. I I don't look for him to have a great game. Well, I, I think this is going to be. Very, very close to the to the first game. I think it's just going to be significantly lower scoring because in week two, the Browns played the Steelers and Deshaun Watson was playing in that game. That was the game Nick Chubb, uh, he got hurt in that game. The game was 26-22 to and the reason why the Browns lost was because of a Steelers defensive touchdown that put them up and the Browns could never get anything going late in that game. This time, instead of Kenny Pickett versus Deshaun Watson, you now have Kenny Pickett against Dorian Thompson-Robinson. Now, could we see... If, if DTR does very poorly, could we see P.J. Walker come in and, and be the saving grace that he that he has been so far, I would say, for the Browns this season? Maybe. Probably, actually, I would say. Because if if you're down, I don't even know. Let's let's say let's say the offense for the Steelers picks up a little bit, which is hasn't really been happening so far this season, or they have like one or two defensive touchdowns. You're down, what, 21 to, to six or seven or whatever the case may be? 
Will the Browns pull DTR? Maybe. I would say probably. If if you if you seriously want to maintain your playoff status, I think you have to play whoever's the best out there. Whoever's the best option. And I was actually kind of shocked that Stefanski's like, yeah, we're going to give DTR a shot to to be the official starter for at least a week. I I mean, are, are, if they're still trying to win, why not put the uh, why not put the quarterback that has more experience who's played in the NFL longer and who has won more games for you? And like I said, had to come behind, uh, come from behind victory against the Colts. Did not did not absolutely What's throw the, the game away against. Now? They're six and three. So maybe they feel like they can sacrifice a game to, to just see how this guy might be able to, to to do. If he does well, and they know they can keep trying him. If he doesn't, then they'll go back to PJ Walker. I would agree. Or maybe with, they'll go to PJ Walker part way through this game. I don't know if the guy. That's what I'm kind of Thompson you know, expecting. Robinson doesn't. Uh, do anything because I, I I think it, exceptions. Th- this game is I don't think this is a game to uh, to experiment because this is the team that you're tied with right now in your own division. They're both six. It's and weird. Three. I don't understand it. As I said when we first start talking this topic, I don't understand why they're doing it. Young quarterback trying to give him a shot. That's the only rationale yeah, I can well. give for starting an inexperienced guy while still trying to maintain your playoff status and especially against a yeah. team you're tied with in your own division. Yeah. It it doesn't make a lot of sense. But you know what? I would say, you know, by halftime, we'll see what the score is, and we'll see what Kevin Stefanski does moving forward. So we'll obviously have to wait and see. But I'm watching season. What's up? Huh? What do you think about Deshaun Watson season? He started off very poor, and even in this game, I think he was one for nine for 19 yards or something like that. Or it, it was against the the Ravens last week. Yeah, yeah, it was against the Ravens last week. You go one for nine for 19 yards, and then you pick it up in the seven, uh, second half, go 14 to 14, and win the game. Slow start again. There seemed to be rush. But the last two games, I would say, he's played pretty well. He's uh-huh. played pretty well. But I, I, I still think... I mean, they got to be disappointed. He's not 2019 to show. they got to be disappointed, right? Uh, so how I, many, I how so, many yeah. games will he have played in this year? I, I, six? Four? Five? Uh, he played six. He's six, played six. Six games. Yeah. Out of 17. Yeah. They're paying him $230 million guaranteed contract. Yeah. How many years does he have on that contract? Uh, I believe it five, was five. Five years, so... Hopefully he can be uh, healthy for four out of uh, well, actually three out of the five now because the first uh, his first year he was out suspended for eleven games, right? Right. And then he played terrible when he came back. So so far, I'd say it's uh, they haven't been getting their money's worth. <laughs> I, I would say so. And just think what the Texans got. Tank Dell was actually uh, he was one of the picks from the Deshaun Watson trade. Yeah. Will Anderson was another pick from the Deshaun Watson trade. Yeah. So the Texans right the now. The Texans were winners in that deal. One hundred percent so far. Uh, unfortunately, the Browns. You, you spent a lot on the quarterback that all, had off the field issues. It, you kind of you were you were you were a desperate team at the time because you didn't trust Baker Mayfield anymore. And so you you sneakily went behind his back. You 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 took away Deshaun Watson because apparently he was going to be a Falcon. You pay him two on you overpay him to the nth degree. Change what owners and GMs now have to think about contracts for quarterbacks. You pay him two hundred and thirty guaranteed, and here we are injured again, unfortunately, or not playing again, missing missing more games, and uh, it's just an unfortunate situation. But yeah, he's out for the season with uh, what was it called again? A f- uh, a displaced fracture to the glenoid. The glenoid. I have no idea. That, I'm going to have to look that up and so, see where it shoulder, is. So but, see where your glenoid bone is. I'm, I've never heard of it. Yeah. Well, then again, I'm not in the medical field. so it must Maybe it, it breaks easily. I don't know. I mean, you had shoulder pads on. so Yeah, when, when, when you have like guys like Jadavian Clowney popping you, Patrick <laughs> Queen popping you, I, I'm not sure shoulder pads do much. Yeah, maybe not. Uh, <laughs> so uh, we're going to take a break here. But coming up, two new reports coming out of New England say that Mac Jones has lost the locker room. And we should expect to see Mac Jones relegated to quarterback three coming out of the bye week. We break that down also. We pick every winner for week 11 along with my Harvey hot hand right after this. Using Wi-Fi without NordVPN could mean sharing your private stuff with more people than you think. Stay safe on public Wi-Fi. Get NordVPN's special offer and encrypt your internet connection. NordVPN. Online security starts with a click. Welcome back to the Harvey Hour. My name is Ethan Harvey. Good to have you in on a Friday. As always, I'm joined alongside my dad, 
Stephen Harvey. Let's get into our next topic. So I found this very, very fascinating. Coming out of the Boston Herald, we have Andrew Callan saying that Mac Jones reportedly, according to an inside source that he has, one team source, uh, one team source estimated that at least 80% of the Patriots locker room is out on Jones. And another one said that uh, the vast majority of players are done with him. I want to bring up this interview from uh, NESN. Uh, talk, uh, it's David Andrews, Patriots starting center, on if Mac Jones is still a leader in the locker room. Everybody can lead in their own way. I think, you know, I think just because they're certain captains, that doesn't mean guys are, you know, not leaders or leaders. I think, you know, there's been a lot of guys, I think, that, you know, have been captains or leaders and things like that. So, you know, everyone can lead in their own way. I mean, I think he still has a lot of respect and, you know, we all just have to do a better job. It's, it's not one person, never will be. What I also find fascinating is that Tom Curran from NBC Sports Boston also said that Mac Jones, when, when I did this little intro to it, saying quarterback three, it's because that uh, he kind of is saying, Show, see what Will Greer has out there. Then you want to move to Bailey Zappi toward the end of the year to see if you have anything, if he has anything left in the tank. And now Mac Jones would be number three, I guess, as the emergency quarterback for your team. What about Malik Cunningham? <laughs> Why won't they give him a chance? Not sure. The offensive line is a sieve. Malik Cunningham runs the four five runs the forty and four five. He can get outside the pocket. He can scramble. He can do something that will be exciting. We need some excitement. Maybe he loses games. That could be too, but at least it'll be exciting losses instead of these ground and pound and and uh, just ugly ugly games that we've been watching they've been terrible to watch you know they you watch them because the patriots kind of hang around hang around hang around and have uh, maybe an outside chance of winning and at the end you say well what the hell happened there the it was ugly and it was hard to watch and mac jones made a, a crucial mistake that lost them the game again so it's time for a big change and uh, some a little excitement Let's yeah, there it is. Come on, come on. You could do better than that. I think even I could do. Maybe I could do better <laughs> than that. I think I could at least lob the ball up in the air and hit the wide receiver headed to the corner. He's wide open. There was there was no excuse for that. So bring up Malik Cunningham. Well, Will Greer, who the hell is he? Nobody ever heard of him. And he he doesn't have the athletic skills of a Malik Cunningham. You you're gonna have an offense that could look a little bit like the the Ra uh, the Ravens maybe you know with a guy <laughs> running around a, no that. but a guy running around maybe running the ball some. Uh, I I think give him a try. That's what, that would be my suggestion. Not Will Greer or Bailey's Bailey Zappi had his chance. He's had his chance. He's looked terrible this year. Every time he's been in there, and he had some good chances, and he and he looked terrible. So, I, I I would I would uh, I would go with uh, Malik Cunningham. He was there from the very beginning. This Will Greer guy came in what at the end of the uh, at the end of Be, the preseason. The, yeah, beginning of the preseason. He, he never he played a Cowboys. snap. He never he, played a snap. He was on the Cowboys. They they decided to let him play the entire third preseason game because they were going to release him anyway. Then the Bengals picked him up. That the Patriots picked him up. I think one yeah. week or two before that the Patriots played the Bengals. I believe. Or, or it was it was something like that. It was the uh, before the Patriots played the Cowboys. They picked him up off the Bengals yeah. practice squad, and I guess well, th that that didn't really help him in the game. All these teams smoked. dropping him doesn't make me uh, confident that he's going to be able to do much of anything. Give Cunningham a, a chance. That's my suggestion. What do you think, though? Do you really think that that the players are out on Mac Jones and just saying, you know, he's terrible? I'm, no, whatever. Do you really think that eighty more about eighty percent? Of that Patriots locker room is really just saying, yeah, Mac Jones ain't it. We're 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 done with him. Do you really believe that? Uh, I find that a little hard to believe. Generally, teams uh, there's camaraderie and they support one another. And uh, you know, even though uh, you may make mistakes and such, uh, there's they get along and uh, they support one another. So I, I don't know if that that seems a little odd to me. I think eighty percent. Uh, I I, I don't agree. know how they. Who are the other 20%? How do they know it's 20, 80, 20? How do they know that? Have they taken a poll? Uh, well, did they <laughs> poll all the players and 80% came up and said, we hate Mac Jones and 20% say we support him? I doubt it. Well, they don't know that. This is some, this is sports hype, hype. Yeah, no. You know, it's, it's, it's just it's stuff to get people like us talking about it. That's all. Well, I, I mean, don't know. 
I, I do think if I were a player on, I'd be starting to suspect whether Mac Jones is really the answer for the Patriots, given how poorly he's played this year. Yeah, no, I, I definitely think there's something there when it comes to is Mac Jones the guy. He was leading the league in interceptions, I think. Uh, thanks to Josh Allen. Josh Allen passed him. <laughs> so uh, Josh Allen's a different talent than Mac Jones. One hundred percent, one thousand um, percent. So I've defended Mac Jones, and even you know what? Last last show on on Tuesday, I, I sort of defended Mac Jones, and I said at least give him one more year or four yeah, games. Yeah, you said he should be the starting quarterback next year. I, I did. Be, yeah. I, well, I said you could draft a quarterback. I would get Marvin Harrison at three, although if you lose to the Giants, you're probably going to get that two or one spot, depending on if the Panthers could actually play football properly. Uh, but if you lose to the Giants, you have that number two spot. You can get maybe Caleb Williams. If you can, get him. If not, I would draft Marvin Harrison Jr. And then what I would do is you could draft a quarterback in the later rounds, whether it be Jaden Daniels out of LSU in the second round. If you can get Bo Nix in the second round, I would go get Bo Nix out of Oregon. What I will say is, why should players be out on Mac Jones? When has he ever in a post conference or in a press conference or in a post game interview ever sort of been down or not ever expressed any hope? Even when he got benched for the third time, this was Mac Jones when asked about getting benched in that game against the Colts. Yeah, they just told me I was out of the game, so I, I wasn't playing very good, so uh, I got taken out of the game uh, before the two-minute drive at the end of the game. So, yeah, that's that's kind of what it was. It's hard, right? It's, it's, it's a difficult situation, but at the end of the day, I really did want the team to win. I'll always be that person. I know that, you know, we didn't win, so it's, it's hard for everybody, but I have to play better to not even be in that situation. You know, it's it's not ideal for anybody, right? No one is going to do good in that situation. So it's not like he's bashing teammates, players, and coaches in the interview. Now, if he does that on the field because of Matt Patricia being your offensive play caller, I can understand that. And I think a lot of people could. Although, I will, I, I will sort of half apologize to Matt Patricia. Bill O'Brien in this offense looks even more anemic than last season, and that's shocking, I would say, to a lot of people. But Mac Jones, has, even when he was asked at the very end of his interview after that Colts game, he was asked, do you still believe in yourself? And, that, and, and he gave probably the most confident answer of, yeah, he does, I have ever heard from any player whatsoever. He actually looked... Very, very frustrated and very, very determined to try to fix something. Now, can he with the current circumstances? I have no idea, but I will also argue, and, and I'll, I'll even let you sort of chime in on this. What, what, quarterback, what quarterback could succeed under these conditions? One of the worst offensive lines in the NFL, and I'm going to bring it up right now, and thanks to uh, Dan Orlovsky from ESPN, he did some research, and, and would you believe, I, I know I can, Pass protection, worst of any team in the last four seasons. Target separation, so wide receivers separating. No surprise when you have Devontae Parker, who's been the worst of the past four seasons. They have been the worst of any team in the last three seasons. If you tell me the offensive line can't protect your quarterback and you have no receivers that could separate, where are you going to get any sort of development from anybody, whether it be running backs, uh, other offensive linemen, even their own wide receivers? When can you get any sort of development under, under those circumstances? I don't think, for sure, Brady could not be successful. Hell, look at 2019. That's an example of what the Patriots could could have been. The, we're seeing basically why Brady left the Patriots. is because they had Nikhil Harry and a broken down Julian Edelman uh, as his wide receivers. And he had, was it, uh, Dalton Keene and David Asiasi as, as his tight ends? Who and who? Exactly. Dalton Keene. Exactly. And he got him in the third round. Both tight ends in the third round. That's another whiff. And by the way, uh, it's a little, you know, up and coming project I'm working on. I, I break down since 2019 Belichick's draft picks offensively. I think the percentage is 15% of his draft picks were hits offensively or could be hits. If I'm not mistaken, it's a very, very bad number. But Belichick has failed on the offensive side. So I can understand if people are frustrated with Mac Jones throwing the Colts game. I can understand that. And I think even Belichick got fed up and, and let his emotions run a little bit high by benching Mac Jones with two minutes remaining in the game. You don't do that to anybody. That's an unfair situation for Zappi. It's an unfair situation for Mac Jones. Because you're going to put out Zappi, who we've seen this year, can't even hit open targets very, very well. Check the Saints game. He missed two wide open targets and one that could have been if he had the arm strength. Uh, you know, it, Zappi's not the answer. Will Greer, I don't think should. I kind of agree with you. I would let Malik Cunningham play at least, if he's not going to be the quarterback, 
put him in there as option routes as they tried to do. He was in there for one passing play. I think he handed the ball off, though. And then he, I think he was in there for as a wide receiver for a couple things. But, yeah, no, let him play. Give a little bit of an excitement. Give some excitement. The def uh, Although, if you really look at it, the Patriots have been very, very unlucky this season. Injuries all across the board. Every injury report, there's about six, seven guys on the injury report. Uh, also, I'll also say this. Belichick's doghouse. Booty was a healthy scratch for seven straight weeks, eight straight weeks. Where was he? Who knows? Uh, actually, was last week his first game back, or was this week his first game back? It no, may have been last week. It was last game. It was this last game. Week, so that yeah. means yeah, eight, eight straight healthy scratches. And now you're going up against the Giants team with Dan. I was said Danny DeVito again. Tommy DeVito and 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 a, and a team at least visually on the sidelines that's crumbling. I mean, Giants players are going at each other's throats. You had Sterling Shepard and uh, Darius Slayton arguing with one another. Saquon Barkley looks pissed off. You're going up against that team, and you're only two-point favorites on the road. Well, I think that uh, if the Patriots still have some thought that Mac Jones could be their future, they should fire Bill O'Brien and bring back uh, Josh McDaniel. I would agree. Because uh, Josh McDaniel... Even though Bill Belichick may have done, whiffed on many offensive uh, uh, draft picks, he had Josh McDaniel as his offensive coordinator and Tom Brady as his quarterback. And that combo got them a lot of Super Bowls and a lot of wins. So I, I think if they still and, – and, and Mac Jones had his best season under uh, Josh McDaniel. So I, it, it, I would – It looked like the next break. I, I, would, I would bring him back. And I don't know, maybe he doesn't want to come back. I would guess they probably talked to him already about it. Maybe. I mean, they could fire Bill O'Brien. He's done a terrible job. He well, really has. Well, He's done a very poor job. I mean, he, yeah. he hasn't got many pieces, right? But uh, McDaniel didn't have many pieces in some of those years. But he always had Tom Brady, I will say that. But the, the, even the seasons when he had uh, Mac Jones or Cam Newton, he was able to orchestrate something with what he had he, he's creative and he he comes up with schemes that uh, work even though the talent is uh, less than what you would hope for so right I, I think if they really think uh, Mac Jones still could be their quarter uh, quarterback then they should go get Josh McDaniel to be their offensive coordinator but in the meantime play Malik Cunningham please <laughs> Well, he's not even on the active roster, so you, why not? You well, maybe he will up. be. Maybe they'll bring him up next week. Well, if Mac Jones is QB three, I would say just just put him in the just put him on the practice squad at that point. Just get yeah. rid of him if you're going to demote him that far, or uh, make him inactive. Make him inactive <laughs> so you can bring a uh, bring up uh, or make Zappy inactive. Just or or Greer. Or Greer. Why not Greer? <laughs> I never heard of that guy. He never played a snap for us. Get him out of there. Get him out of there. Uh, I, I will find I, what I find actually pretty funny is that reportedly Belichick didn't want to replace Josh McDaniels in 2022 um, after McDaniels went to be the head coach of the, the Raiders. He didn't want to bring in Bill O'Brien at that time because he was afraid that after that season they'd be so good Bill O'Brien would want to be a head coach other uh, elsewhere. Come on, let's say that fell right flat on its face with that one. Yeah, because you I have, have a different I have a different uh, thought on that one. Sure. I think that Belichick, there might have been a little jealousy there between McDaniel and, and Belichick. McDaniel and that too people much credit. Think, uh, people think that uh, Belichick, all he is is a defensive mind and uh, that the offense Sorry, has that. always been uh, McDaniel. The success of the offense was really McDaniel's, and Belichick was out to prove that, you know what, the offensive coordinator isn't that big a deal. It doesn't make that big a, a difference out here. We'll put in defensive players, uh, defensive coaches to run the offense, and uh, and if we do well, which we expect to do, and uh, and we expect that the defense will play more of a role in our wins, then people will accept that, and that will. And Josh McDaniel will be seen as not the big reason that uh, that we did well all those years. I was I was the reason. That's my that's my psychological thinking on this one, Nate. You know what that that may have been one of your best one of your best uh, little predictions or uh, or, or, or things uh, because insights. That's an insight that that may I would say that's probably more true than it is false. Yeah, because that just seems like I mean, just think about it. Belichick wanted to get off Brady back in 2014. He was about to in 2017 when he when Brady went to Kraft and said, "No, no, no, I'm the quarterback here." So. Hey, you, you, you might have something there. Uh, but I believe it is time for our Week 11 pick. So every single week, what we do is we pick every winner 
for each of those weeks. We pick each team uh, that'll hopefully win our matchups. We've actually been doing, I would say, better than we did last year. Uh, so I believe I will start this time as I always do. Uh, so last night, as we discussed, the Ravens were able to beat the the uh, the Bengals. Unfortunately, Joe Burrow's out for the season. Lamar Jackson seemed a little bit banged up. OBJ a little bit banged up. They seem to be a, a good to go for next week. However, Mark Andrews is most likely out for the year, so unfortunately, they won't have him for the remainder of their probable playoff run, if not a Super Bowl run. Let's start with Sunday's game, Cowboys at Panthers. Cowboys, 10.5-point 10 10 favorites on the road against a Panthers team. Uh, that is 1, and I believe 1-8 and eight or 1-9, and nine, and they are absolutely terrible. They can't win games, and that's exactly what the Cowboys love. They feast on very, very bad teams. I, I've seen a shocking amount of people picking the Panthers to at least cover this point spread. If you take a look at the numbers against very, very bad teams, the Cowboys have decimated them, averaging 40 points a game and, and, and allowing only 10 points a game. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the Cowboys in a blowout. I'll take them to win and obviously cover the minus 10.5 point spread. The next one, Steelers at Browns. I'm shocked, shocked. The Steelers are somehow underdogs against a team starting DTR. I have no idea why. I would say the Steelers' defense disrupts Dorian Thompson-Robinson so much. I would say there's at least one defensive touchdown in this game. I'll take the Steelers to win outright and take the points. One and a half points for a Steelers team uh, on the road against a team that's starting a fifth-round rookie. I don't understand it. I think this is a pretty easy pick. The next one, Justin Fields' return game against the Lions. The Lions played a very emotional and a very, very high-scoring and high-energy and high, uh, high mode game against the Chargers. You put up 41 points. I would say you take a little bit of a dip now, and with Justin Fields motivated, I'll take the the, the Bears to cover the point spread at plus 7.5, but the Lions do get the victory. Next one, Cardinals at Texans. C.J. Stroud's on an MVP run. I think he is Offensive Rookie of the Year. Pretty much solidified, but this time, right now, it's about the MVP. Right now, C.J. Stroud, I would say, is at least a top 5 MVP favorite. You're going against Kyler Murray playing in his second game of the season. Kyler Murray did not look terrible. He looked pretty good, actually. He was efficient. He let it come from behind victory. It's phenomenal for him. However, I'm going to take the Texans here. They're on a roll right now. They had they had two tremendous come from behind, or I guess uh, comeback game winning drives from CJ Stroud that CJ Stroud orchestrated. One that was 46 seconds and they scored a touchdown. The other one after a Tyler Boyd drop, you're able to come uh, with about a minute 33 left in the game, able to set up Matt Amendola for a game winning field goal. I'll take the Texans to keep on rolling. CJ Stroud, who I uh, who I wanted to be number one going to the Panthers, he went to the Texans. I'll take CJ Stroud to win and cover the minus four and a half point spread. The next one. Raiders with Aiden O'Connell up against the, the team coming off of a bye, the Miami Dolphins, and I'm taking the team that came off of a bye at 12 and a half. I'll say this right now. Now, they didn't get embarrassed, but they were on the track of being embarrassed back in Germany uh, when the Dolphins played the Chiefs. It was very, very bad, very, very embarrassing, and I'll sort of take that, and the Dolphins off of a bye, Mike McDaniel, this offense is revolutionary in today's game. A lot of motion. When you have Jalen Waddle, uh, Devon Chains coming back as well, uh, supposedly Raheem Mostert, I mean, this team is loaded with weapons. They're getting healthier, and especially off a of bye after you you were about to get decimated. Uh, but the Chiefs actually have one of, if not the worst, second half offense in the league. I'll take the Dolphins to crush, crush the Raiders in this game, and and unfortunately, to a lot of Raiders fans, give uh, Pierce his first loss as a head coach. I'll take the Dolphins to win and cover the minus 12.5 point spread. Next one, Chargers at Packers. I'm taking uh, Justin Herbert. They 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 lost a very, very tough game. Uh, like I said, they, they gave up 41 points to the Detroit Lions. You scored 38. Uh, the Packers are terrible. Uh, so I, I thought Jordan Love would be a little bit better. I said that Jordan Love could at least get this team to 8-9 and nine or somewhere around there. Repeat what Aaron Rodgers did, at least record-wise. Uh, this season and he hasn't done that. He's been turning the ball over a lot. He is very, very low completion percentage. He hasn't played anywhere near the level I thought he was going to play. I'll take the better quarterback and the team with the better weapons, maybe not defensive statistics uh, that they're better, but I will take the charge to win and cover the minus three point spread on the road. The next one, Titans with Will Levis up against the Jacksonville Jaguars. It's sort of the same thing with the Dolphins here. You got absolutely embarrassed last week and any good to really, really great team. When you're embarrassed, you follow up that next week and you perform very, very well. And I'll take Trevor Lawrence and this Jaguars team who got absolutely outplayed on every phase of the game against the 49ers. They got smoked on every level. I'll take the Jaguars to win and dominate a Will Levis Texas, uh, Titans team that I think could be promising at some point this season, but you need a better offensive line, You and, and I think that will open up Derrick Henry. If you're going to let him go this season or trade him, whatever the case may be, that is what it is. But you got Sharp or Sharps in the backfield. Uh, he's been he's been actually not, not that 
that bad. He's been pretty effective. Uh, I think you need to get a better offensive line. D-Hop seemed like a pretty good pickup, getting a bunch of deep balls from Will Levis, but that play action is his game. He operates it very well. You can't get it done against the Jaguars team. I'll take the Jaguars to win and cover the minus seven-point spread. The next one, Dan uh, once again, almost said Danny DeVito. Tommy DeVito up against the Commanders. I'll take Sam Howell, who currently leads the league in passing yards, which is shocking. I never thought, you know, heading into the season, if you, if you were to tell me, by by the middle of the year, who would be leading the league in passing yards? Sam Howell would have been nowhere near uh, the top of my list. I think he would be sort of towards the bottom or maybe even benched for another quarterback. Who knows? But he is at the top of the league right now in passing yards. I will take this commander's team to absolutely crush the Giants. They have no will. I, I really believe the Giants this season, they have no will left. They got rid of one of their best defensive pieces. Uh, Saquon Barkley seems frustrated. You had Slayton and Shepard going at it on the sidelines. You have Brian Dayball barking at his quarterbacks. Uh, I don't like it. The Giants right now are imploding. Daniel Jones is out for the year, unfortunately. I'll take the Commanders and Sam Howell to keep this, this ball rolling surprisingly in the NFC East and win and cover the 9.5 point spread. The next one, the Buccaneers against the San Francisco 49ers. I think because the 49ers are healthy, they are back on track right now, and they look very, very good. They look like the dominant team we saw early in the season when they were steamrolling teams left and right. Uh, because they're healthy, I'll take them win and cover the 11.5 point spread. Uh, Baker Mayfield, he's been okay. He had a pretty good game, actually, uh, the, the past couple weeks, but unfortunately, he hasn't been able to really get many wins. I do think it's interesting. I think this this offseason for the Bucks is going to be interesting whether or not they retain Baker Mayfield or if they let him go and maybe draft another quarterback, maybe high in the high in the draft. But I will take the 49ers to win and cover the minus 11.5 point spread. Brock Purdy gets it going again and keeps that, that high energy, high tempo that we saw early in the year for the 49ers. The next one, the Jets at the Bills. Bills favored by seven points. And I'm gonna take it. The week one against the uh, week one against the Jets, the atmosphere was entirely different. You were at 9-11. Aaron Rodgers in this game carrying out the American flag. He goes down. You're trying to will a victory, especially in New York. Uh, uh, I think, yeah, uh, Josh Allen had four turnovers, one fumble, three picks. That's not going to happen in this one, especially with Stephon Diggs, uh, at least his brother, barking how uh, you know Josh Allen was a bum before Diggs got there, which statistically is kind of true. Uh, I, I think Josh Allen won't have four turnovers in this game, and I guarantee you Gibson won't have a punt return touchdown. I'll take the Bills to win and cover the minus seven point spread. The next one, Seahawks at Rams. Matthew Stafford will be back, and this team's getting healthier. I will take the Rams to win, and apparently they were plus one <laughs> underdogs at home. The, the Seattle defense hasn't been, you know, recently what it has been throughout the year. Geno Smith is being more careless with the football. I think this Rams team, because it's healthier, because you have your starting quarterback instead of Brett Ripien, you have Matt Stafford back. I think this should be an easy win for the Rams. I'll take them to win and, and, and also take the points. The next one, Sunday Night Football. It's the Pastronaut versus a surprisingly interesting Denver Broncos team. After their defense was absolutely horrible early in the year, they're, I would say they're pretty good. I'm not going to say they're fully back to what they were last season, but they've been very, very good so far. So I think they slowed down, slowed down Josh Dobbs. Justin Jefferson is questionable. That scares the that that scares the <laughs> that scares the pants off me. I would say because when you have T.J. Hawkinson who just had over 100 yards receiving, you have an okay running game, but it's enhanced because of Josh Dobbs. Then you add Justin Jefferson to that. That's where I'm going to get nervous. But I'm going to take the defense to slow down. I'm not saying stop. Russell Wilson's been pretty good. He's he's been make he's been coming more of a playmaker than a game manager that we had last season. Uh, and because of that, I think the defense steps it up a little bit against the Vikings. I'll take the Broncos to win on Sunday Night Football and cover the minus two and a half point spread. And the last one, Monday Night Football, a rematch of this this prior Super Bowl. Eagles at Chiefs. Chiefs favored by two and a half. I'll take the Eagles if if Jalen hurts. Didn't fumble the ball late in that game. And also, if there wasn't a holding call, that was a toss-up. I don't know if you necessarily... If it was if, if it was a hold, if it's not a hold, whatever the case may be, bad field, all these conditions that, that Eagles fans, and including myself, were sort of using at the time... This time, I don't think it, I don't think it'll be the case. I think Jalen Hurts and this team are better. Uh, the numbers don't say it, but I think they have developed a offense that is dynamic. They had they literally have the most unstoppable play, the brotherly shove or tush push. Uh, I I, th I think the Eagles are going to win this one here. I, I feel it. I picked them last season to win the Super Bowl against these Chiefs. They didn't. They get their revenge. Jason Kelsey, I believe, is is winless against the Chiefs. He finally gets his first win against the Kansas City Chiefs, and those are my picks for Week 11.
Okay, well, that's some good analysis you got there, Nate. You did have the uh, Steelers at minus one and a half on your on your scorecard there. So, what is the point spread different? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It should have been a plus one and a half. Oh, right? sorry, yeah, plus one. Yeah, my fault. Yeah, 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 but that's okay. Yeah. Uh, edit that in post. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, my picks. Okay. So I'm one and zero oh so far. Happy about that. Uh, I will say in the second one here, just looking at this point spread, it really says how bad uh, the uh, picker, the uh, uh, handicappers, size. the yeah. handicappers uh, think the Giants are, right? Because the Giants last week were uh, the Cowboys had 17 and a half points yeah. and they covered, right? <laughs> and they covered and then some, yeah, right? And, and now against the Panthers who only have one win and look terrible. The point spread's only 10 and a half. How could that be? I don't get it. So anyway, I'm taking the Cowboys and I think they will cover, but uh, why it isn't uh, 17 and a half or 20 points. I don't understand because the Panthers are even worse than the, uh, is bad, at least as bad as the giants record wise. They're worse. <laughs> yeah. So I, I don't understand that, but I am taking the, uh, the Cowboys. I'm picking the Steelers for all the same reasons that, uh, you, you outlined. I'm picking the uh, the Lions, uh, although uh, I think that uh, this might be a, a close game. Uh, I'm not sure the Lions. Uh, I still I wonder about them a little bit, but uh, you know, against the Bears, everybody does well this year so far. And Justin Fields is still out. Uh, he's back this week. He's back this week. So I, I think this game will be closer. Uh, but I'm I'm still uh, I'm I'm packing the Lions to cover the point spread. Uh, I'm picking the Texans over the Cardinals, but I don't think they cover. Uh, you've got uh, Kyler Murray back. I think that gives the Cardinals a uh, boost. And I don't think the Cardinals are that bad a team. Uh, I think the, the Texans, young team, uh, they've got uh, C.J. Stroud, who is a superstar in my mind. He uh, could be the rookie of the year and the MVP. Uh, they have uh, The defense is good, and their coaching staff is great. So. I pick them to win, but I think it will be a very close game. Uh, the the uh, Dolphins against the Raiders. Uh, I think the Dolphins will win, but I think that uh, they won't cover. Uh, Twelve and a half points. Uh, I think the Raiders uh, found a little some new life under uh, Pierce, and uh, I the Dolphins have been a little shaky against really good teams. Uh, the, they haven't really beaten a really good team. The Raiders certainly on a really good team, but uh, they seem to have some new life under their interim head coach. So I, I'm predicting that he will get the head coaching job at the end of the season if things keep up the way they're going. We also said Rich Passaccia should deserve it a couple years ago. They, and and yeah. they should have done it, right? I, I, I agree. Know, they, yeah. they've been, it's been all downhill since then, right? Well, maybe Pierce is the guy. Maybe. You, you would we'll hope. See. I got the Chargers against Green Bay. I don't think Jordan loves the real deal. I think the Packers should go out and find themselves another quarterback. Uh, the Ravens, I'm sorry, the uh, Jaguars against the Titans. We were hyping Will Levis. Well, Will Levis this, Will Levis that. Will Levis is going to be the savior for the Titans. Maybe he can be someday, but he wasn't last week, that's for sure. But the Raven, uh, the Titans couldn't get their running game going. you got to have that going to help like Levis. It was 2.4 yards of yeah, carry. Yeah, it's terrible. It's horrible. With Derrick Henry, I don't understand it. Uh, they, uh, Tampa Bay has a very good run defense, so I guess that's why. But uh, I think this one will be reasonably close, but I do think that the Jaguars will win it. And uh, Will Levis, I don't know. We'll see how he plays. If the running game isn't going well, then I don't think he'll have such a great game. Washington always plays New York well. I think the New Giants have only beat him once in the last 10 games or so. Wow. I like the Washington, nine and a half points. I like Sam Howell. He's really a tough customer, taking all those sacks and still leading the league in the yards. I think that's pretty impressive. Uh, I like San Francisco over Tampa Bay, although 11 and a half points I think is a little high. The Tampa Bay uh, is not that bad. They uh, the run defense is great. Pass defense is always not very good. Uh, Baker Mayfield's having a pretty good season. I do think he'll be back. I think they'll uh, give him another season. And uh, their running game has never been so hot. Tampa Bay and against San Francisco, it will be non-existent. So uh, this next game, Bills Jets. I think this is a must-win for the Bills. I really do. If they lose this game. 
then they will be under 500, and their chances of the playoffs are slim. And and you know the Jets would be two and zero above them, which is yeah, big, at which will be uh, in, in, uh, first for a long, long time, right? And the Jets are have Zach Wilson out there who lost last week's game again with a with a in, in a ill-timed very, very bad, uh, interception yeah. at a yeah. key point in the game. Really bad, unfortunate. I do think Zach Wilson played better this year, and he has uh, grown up quite a bit. And uh, but if the Aaron Rodgers could even limp out onto the field, he would be the starter. So we'll have to see whether they – I don't think they'll be in contention when he may be ready to play and he won't be back on the field. Well, there was season. something about a mid-December return. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Yeah. Mid-December. How could that be? I, I, I think if that. I were Aaron Rodgers, I would not do that, right? I'm 40 years old. The offensive line stinks. I just had an Achilles heel injury. Do I want to – chance re-injuring that and then uh, risk not being able to play next season uh, i i just don't think i don't know why load him up on that ayahuasca tea you know get, get him drinking that and you know he'll be he'll maybe be, he'll be in tip top shape could be okay you pick the rams i'm picking the seahawks uh, i think uh, they are favored by minus one i think they'll find a way to win that game on the road they still have play up there they a playoff team right now the seahawks i think uh, the they seahawks are, are. yeah Correct. so the rams aren't so the Seahawks got something going. I think they're well coached. Got a decent defense. Uh, uh, they've got uh, the quarterback there playing another year where he's playing better than people probably thought. So uh, I, I I think Geno Smith is uh, – I give him a lot of credit. And uh, I, th- I think he'll do well on Sunday against the Rams defense, which is sketchy. I like the uh, Minnesota Vikings to beat – uh, the Broncos, even though the Broncos are home and favored. I like the Joshua Dobbs story. I think it continues. I'm hoping and praying Justin Jefferson gets out there on the field this week. If they do, if he does, I, I think the Vikings are going to win this game. And it's going to be a I'm fun terrified. one to watch. This, this game I hate. Yeah, That's why I didn't well. put it down as a... And again, I, I disagree with you on the uh, Chiefs and the Eagles. I think the Chiefs that are home, uh, they're favored by two and a half. The only thing with the Chiefs I worry about is their wide receivers are not that great. And their offense is never really, doesn't seem to have ever really gotten into gear. And But the uh, Eagles, I'd say, defense is not as good as it was last year. Right? And uh, Jalen Hurts kind of running on one wheel. Right? He has that knee injury. So I'm liking the Chiefs to uh, beat the Eagles on Monday Night Football. So we'll see what happens. I, I will say, though, we have at least uh – Point spread wise, I, I I'll have to look at the uh, the old old footage. I'm doing better than I did last year. I don't think win I loss are doing much better. Win, I, win I, loss are doing. I, no, I, but it's point spread. I think I was under 500 all year last year. You were you were pretty bad. Yeah. And then it, we we were very close up until I think three weeks ago, and then you know the separation happened in the win loss. Ah, the game it's still got seven games to go here. I'm not going to try to do the math again. That that was bad on Tuesday or, or Friday. Not not gonna, not going to do the math there. Um, but yeah, I believe it is time for another rendition of the Harvey Hot End. We had a first. I'm going to actually, you know, let's, let's, let's have a little bit of applause here. Let's see if I can get it up. So for the first time in Harvey Hot End history, we went 5-0. and oh. Lions, thank God the point spread moved to minus two. We hit it. Cardinals plus one and a half. We hit it. Uh, Cowboys minus 17 and a half. We hit it. Raiders plus one. We hit it. And the Broncos, thank God. Josh Allen leads the league in turnovers. I got Broncos plus seven. We hit it. Five and oh. And uh, the record, because I, I told you, I think we talked about it on Tuesday or last Friday. Uh, you said, what's your record so far? So through 10 weeks last season, I was 52%, 26 and 24. Through 10 weeks this season, I'm 28, 19 and three. That's 59.57%. So we are on an absolute tear so far this season. We start off great two, four, and one weeks. Then we go five and zero oh in week ten. All of, oh, we nearly doubled our money last week. So hopefully we can continue this amazing streak that we've had with another week of tremendous picks. So let's jump right into it with the first pick of week ten, uh, week eleven. Sorry, of the Harvey Hot Hand Steelers at Browns. Steelers at Browns. Let's talk about this. So right now the Browns are starting DTR instead of PJ Walker. I don't necessarily love that move, but it's their decision. It's Kevin Stefanski. Not only that, 
You're you're sending out a quarterback, a fifth round rookie quarterback, against a team whose defense is the story. You have T.J. Watt, who has been dominant throughout his entire career. You're sending him out. You're sending him out against that defense. That is a bad idea. I say DTR makes more than one mistake when he had that one game against the Ravens. By the way, this would be his second start, and his, his, his so far his two starts are against really really good defenses. It's kind of unfair to him. Put him out against one team that's not that great. Throwing him out against the Steelers that's basically like murder. So I'll take the Steelers to win and cover, uh, or sorry, win twenty to seventeen and get the points because they're underdogs somehow, and they win twenty seventeen. Get the plus one and a half point spread. Seahawks at Rams. So we talked about this, Matt Stafford back, team getting much healthier. This may be the healthiest the Rams have been all year. You get Matt Stafford back, hook him up with Tutu Atwell, Puka Nakua, and Cooper uh, Cooper Cup. The running game, Williams is pretty good in the backfield. You got pieces, your defense is still suspect. Your offensive line is, is, is okay, not great. But I will take Matt Stafford because he's coming back, because the Seahawks defense has declined. Uh, Geno Smith is being much more careless with the football. I'll take the Rams to upset the the, uh, Seahawks at home, get the plus one point spread, win 28 to 23. Jets at Bills. This one is risky for a lot of people, but I'm going to take it. I'm going to take the Bills to win and cover the minus seven point spread. So what are we going to do? I guarantee you Josh Allen will not have three interceptions and one fumble against the Jets in this game like he did in week one against the Jets. And by the way, I'll also say this, Gibson won't have a punt return touchdown like he did in week one. Not only that, I think the the Bills are playing for something. Josh Allen reportedly was shocked that they fired Ken Dorsey, their offensive coordinator. Now they got Joe Brady as their interim OC. This this should be a brand new team. James Cook in the backfield, I feel like they're going to run it much more. He had a great game last week. He did have a fumble, unfortunately, but he had over 100 yards. He looked pretty efficient. Josh Allen, they're going to try to get the ball out of his hands, either much quicker or by handing the football off. This is going to be a new Bills team, hopefully with Joe Brady as OC. I'll take the Bills to win and cover the minus seven points, but they win 27-17. Cowboys at Panthers. So this one's a little bit risky for a lot of people because I've seen a decent amount of people picking Panthers plus 10.5 for some reason, but I, I'm going to tell you right now why there's no shot the Panthers cover this point spread. So the defense that the Cowboys have, which we know is great, how about against the bad teams like the Jets and the Rams without Matt Stafford and the Patriots and all these other horrible teams? The defense is allowing 10 points per game, 218 total yards per game, and forcing nearly three turnovers per game against these bad teams. The Panthers definitely uh, classify as a very, very bad team. What about the offense? Okay, let's talk about the offense. The offense is putting up 410 total yards per game. They're averaging 40 points per game, and they have three turnovers in five games against these bad teams. Not turning the ball over much, forcing a lot of turnovers. You're putting up 40 points a game against these terrible teams. I would say you continue that dominant streak against poor teams. I'll take the Cowboys to win and cover the minus 10.5 point spread. They win 30 to 14. And the last one for this week, Bears at Lions. Justin Fields' return game I think is going to be very, very fascinating to watch because he has to be motivated. A lot of reports were coming out saying that the Bears, if they get the number one spot because the Panthers are, will be terrible, they may look at Caleb Williams as their new quarterback one for the future. Justin Fields maybe, I would say potentially, is playing for a job right now. You have DJ Moore. They, they traded away that first overall pick to get you to, to get you DJ more and that's big for them so what are they going to do now what are you going to do now well I'm going to tell you exactly what you're going to do Justin Fields will play pretty he'll play okay his first game back I'm not going to expect much from him but what I expect him to do is not turn the ball over much and I expect him to use his legs use his legs he had a, he had a dislocation on his throwing thumb he was out for a couple of weeks you had T- uh, Tyler Bajan as your quarterback you know, we, we no one liked it. No one liked it. Did he win a game or two? Yeah, he did. But Justin Fields will be out there. I'd say they're going to run the ball very well. Your offensive line is still suspect. The Lions, on the other hand, played a very, very emotional and hard-fought game against the Chargers, uh, beating them 41 to 38. I would say that they tone it down a little bit. They still get the win, but it's not going to be this high-scoring and high, you know, falutin offense that the Lions had last week. I'll take the Bears to cover the plus seven and a half points, but but the the Lions win 24. 24- 17, and that wraps up week 11's Harvey Hot End. Yeah, you got some good picks in, eight. Do you good hate luck. any of them? Uh, for yeah, I'm not. I think the the Seahawks uh, Rams game. I'm I'm not sure that one you're gonna get. I'm picking the Seahawks to win that one. 
So you don't yeah. even like Seahawks, Rams. Okay, yeah. fair, fair. The Josh rest of Allen, them, the rest of them, I think. Uh, you know, I do think that Josh Allen's not going to throw three interceptions in the in the game against the Jets, and he needs to calm down. That's his issue. You know, he gets too hyped up. He, he's and, trying to and, win every game yeah, when all and, you got to do is just. You know, yeah, yeah. try. You don't need to try not to I lose. I don't know. Just Maybe don't the the swing uh, the ball around all the time. Dorsey firing will shake him up. Maybe I don't know. We'll see. I I hope so. I'm I'm betting him this week. So that wraps it up for the Harvey Hot End, and that wraps it up for this episode of the Harvey Hour. Uh, thank you so much for tuning into today's show. You can listen to us on Spotify, iHeartRadio, wherever you get your podcast, or watch us on YouTube. Clips will be uploaded throughout the week, and and especially tomorrow. Uh, but for this episode of the Harvey Hour for this Friday. Uh, November 17th. This is it. My name's Nathan Harvey. That's my dad, Stephen Harvey. We are the Harvey Hour. Catch us Tuesday to recap all these football games at 6.30 p.m. Eastern right here on YouTube.